Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on pathophysiology of arrhythmias. Introduction Cardiac arrhythmia is a deviation from normal sinus rhythm. It also refers to absence of normal sinus rhythm. And cardiac dysrhythmias refers to a disturbance in the rate of cardiac muscle contractions or any variation from the normal rhythm or rate of heartbeat. Some form of arrhythmia complicates between 60 and 90% of all anesthetics. However, these figures are based on studies which are now more than three decades old and which largely predate modern anesthetic drugs and techniques. Transient disturbances of cardiac rhythm during anesthesia are relatively common. Some are innocuous, while some may threaten hemodynamic stability. Anesthetists should be able to provide urgent treatment. Classification of dysrhythmias can be classified as disorders of impulse formation or disorders of impulse conduction. Examples of disorders of impulse formation include supraventricular arrhythmia such as sinus arrhythmia, sinus bradycardia, sinus tachycardia, SVT, sick sinus syndrome, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, atrial ectopic beats, etc. Other disorders of impulse formation include junctional rhythms and ventricular arrhythmias including ventricular fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia, and ventricular ectopic beats. Examples of disorders of impulse conduction include slow or blocked conduction such as during heart block and abnormal pathway of conduction such as in Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Normal cardiac conduction and action potential. Pacemaker action potential. Pacemaker cells in the SA node generate action potential spontaneously and at regular intervals than other parts of the conducting system. When a spontaneously developing local potential, known as the pacemaker potential, reaches the threshold potential, action potentials are generated in the SA node. There are three phases, phase 0, phase 3, and phase 4. During phase 0, this lasts for 1 to 2 milliseconds. Baseline drift occurs spontaneously. The threshold potential is achieved at negative 40 millivolts. Sodium influx occurs as sodium channels open. A decrease in permeability to potassium occurs. Voltage-gated potassium channels that open in the repolarization phase of the previous action potential are closing. Slow calcium influx occurs at about negative 30 mV. Slow L-type calcium channels open. Calcium influx results in further depolarization, resulting in a slurred upstroke. On the ECG, Spread of depolarization throughout the atrial muscle results in the P wave and the ventricular muscle results in the QRS complex. During phase 3, efflux of potassium occurs as potassium channels open. Efflux of potassium causes rapid repolarization of the cell. Calcium channels close during phase 3. During phase 4, there is hyperpolarization and occurs before potassium efflux has completely stopped. Gradual drift towards the threshold potential occurs after hyperpolarization ceases due to sodium influx, heat-type calcium channels, and sodium-calcium pump. Cations enter the cell. The gradient of the line in phase 4 is increased by sympathetic stimulation and decreased by parasympathetic stimulation. Next is the cardiac conduction system action potential. There are five phases. Phases 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. During phase 0, fast sodium influx occurs as voltage-gated sodium channels open. Rapid depolarization occurs once the threshold potential is reached. The gradient of this line is almost vertical. Voltage-gated potassium channels close. During phase 1, potassium efflux occurs, sodium channels close and potassium channels open, and repolarization begins to occur. Phase 1 is short in duration and does not cause repolarization below 0 mV. During phase 2, there is opening of L-type calcium channels. Calcium influx offsets the action of potassium efflux. Depolarization is maintained during this phase and a plateau occurs. This time period is the absolute refractory period. During this period, no further depolarization is possible, thus tetany is not possible in the myocardium. The end of the absolute refractory period is signaled by the earliest transient depolarization that can be elicited as sufficient numbers of sodium channels 
that can be activated are present. This absolute refractory period ends at the beginning of the T wave of the ECG. The plateau is not completely horizontal as repolarization is slowed but not completely halted by calcium influx. During phase 3, L-type calcium channels close, continued potassium efflux causes repolarization. Once repolarization reaches the threshold potential, the cell is relatively refractory. However, an unusually strong stimulus can produce depolarization during this period. This period is marked by the T-wave of the ECG. During phase 4, potassium channels close, the sodium-potassium pump restores the ionic gradients. 3 sodium is pumped out of the cell in exchange for 2 potassium, which is pumped into the cell. Overall, a slow loss of positive ionic charge occurs from within the cell. Relative refractory period occurs. The earliest propagated action potential marks the end of the effective or functional refractory period. Kindly refer to the video Cardiac Conduction System for further details. Pathophysiology of arrhythmias Arrhythmias are caused by abnormalities of impulse generation, impulse conduction, or both. Mechanisms of arrhythmia generation includes altered automaticity, unidirectional conduction block, and ectopic foci. Altered automaticity Orthorhythmicity of cardiac muscle the heart is said to be autorhythmic because it stimulates itself, auto, to contract at regular intervals, rhythmic. Each part of the cardiac conduction system has its own intrinsic pacemaker. Any cell of the cardiac conduction system can trigger its own action potential and act as a pacemaker. The heart will continue to beat autorhythmically despite being removed from the body if it is maintained under physiological conditions with the proper nutrients and temperature. The highest rate of spontaneous depolarization normally occurs in the SA node, making it the dominant pacemaker in the heart. However, the dominance of the SA node can be superseded in the following situations. Decrease in SA node firing rate, delays or blockade of normal conduction, presence of secondary pacemakers, and damage of the SA node. If a higher pacing center, such as the SA node, is damaged and stops functioning, a lower pacemaker can take over. The intrinsic rates of the SA node is 60 to 100 beats per minute, the AV node 40 to 60 beats per minute, bundle of his 40 to 60 beats per minute, and Purkinje fibers 20 to 40 beats per minute. Abnormal automaticity of any part of the conduction system can lead to arrhythmias. Increased pacemaker activity in the SA node can be due to increased sympathetic tone and may cause sinus tachycardia, atrial tachyarrhythmias and ventricular tachyarrhythmias. Decreased pacemaker activity in the SA node may be due to increases in vagal tone or SA node damage. This may allow the emergence of latent pacemaker activity in distal conducting tissues such as the AV node or the bundle of his Purkinje system causing sinus bradycardia or AV nodal or idioventricular escape rhythms. Increased automaticity in atrial, ventricular or conducting tissues can occur due to ischemia or electrolyte disturbances such as hypokalemia, etc. The resting potential of contractile tissue loses its stability and may reach its threshold for depolarization before the SA node and cause an arrhythmia. The next mechanism is unidirectional conduction block. Normal conduction pathways can be interrupted by anatomical defects, alterations in refractory period, and alterations in excitability. These interruptions may cause heart block or bradyarrhythmias and favors arrhythmias caused by abnormal re-entry or automaticity. Failure of conduction from the SA node to surrounding tissue can cause bradyarrhythmias. Re-entrant arrhythmias arises when forward conduction of impulses in a branch of the conduction pathway is blocked by disease and retrograde conduction occurs. If the refractory period of the two branches are different, retrograde conduction may occur in cells which have already discharged and repolarized, triggering a further action potential which is both premature and ectopic. 
premature action potentials can become self-sustaining in circus movements, leading to atrial or ventricular tachycardia or fibrillation. Ectopic foci During bradycardia or SA node block, pathological damage in cardiac muscle cells or conducting tissues may augment the generation of arrhythmias from ectopic foci by increased automaticity, increased excitability, re-entry phenomena, or pathological after depolarizations. Ectopic foci may give rise to arrhythmias in a variety of circumstances. Pathological after depolarizations are spontaneous impulses arising just after the normal action potentials. After potentials may reach the threshold potential and precipitate tachyarrhythmias. This occurs most commonly in ischemic myocardium, especially in the presence of hypoxemia, increased catecholamines, certain medications, and electrolyte abnormalities. Excitability of cardiac cells refers to the ability of the cardiac cell to respond to a stimulus by depolarizing. This can be measured by assessing the difference between the resting transmembrane potential and the threshold potential of the cell. The smaller the difference between these potentials, the more excitable or irritable is the cell. Precipitance of arrhythmias during anesthesia or critical care. Old age. Aging causes degeneration of the conduction system, and this is the most common precipitant for bradyarrhythmias. Medical conditions, such as sepsis, pre-existing cardiac disease, such as coronary artery disease, valvular heart disease, cardiomyopathies, myocarditis, etc. Pneumonia, alcohol abuse, tyrotoxicosis, subarachnoid hemorrhage, etc. Hypoxia, hypercapnia, hypotension, catecholamines, endogenous or exogenous, electrolyte abnormalities such as that of potassium, magnesium, and calcium, acid-base abnormalities, autonomic effects such as reflex vagal stimulation, brain tumors or trauma, blockade of the sympathetic nervous system by subarachnoid local anesthetics, etc. Drugs or toxins such as inotropic drugs, antiarrhythmic drugs, thiophylline, cocaine, saxamethonium, anticholine esterase, ketamine, volatile anesthetic agents, etc. Mechanical stimuli such as during CVP or PAFC catheter insertion or during direct cardiac stimulation during cardiothoracic surgery, myocardial ischemia, and pacemaker malfunction. Mechanism of actions of antiarrhythmic drugs an arrhythmia may be controlled either by slowing the primary mechanism, in the case of supraventricular arrhythmias, by reducing the proportion of impulses transmitted through the AV node to the ventricular conducting system. Antiarrhythmic drugs produce their effects by hindering the passage of ions such as sodium, potassium, or calcium across ion channels present in the heart, and this alters the cardiac action potential to produce reduced automaticity reduce speed of conduction of the action potential, and reduce rate of repolarization. To produce reduced automaticity, which is the tendency to spontaneously discharge of cardiac cells, antiarrhythmic drugs may reduce the rate of leakage of sodium, thereby reducing the slope of phase 4, increase electronegativity of the resulting membrane potential, or reduce electronegativity of the threshold potential. Reduced speed of conduction of the action potential results in reduced height and slope of phase zero discharge. Reduced rate of repolarization prolongs the refractory period of the discharging cell. All antiarrhythmic drugs may themselves induce arrhythmias, particularly class 1 antiarrhythmics. Many antiarrhythmic drugs have a narrow therapeutic index and some have been associated with an increase in mortality in large-scale studies. These are my references. Thank you.